What's up guys, it's Mike. Welcome back or to the channel and today we are gonna be talking soft shackles. And we are continuing the build today in a sense because as you guys can see, I've got a bunch of gear here, including these soft shackles. And these are basically the best item you can throw in your recovery kit if you go off-roading or you have an off-road rig of any sort. And I'll give you five reasons why you should grab these and buy them and pick them up, put them in your Jeep today. But first, let's go, let's get to building my recovery kit. Because basically, I bought a whole bunch of things to upgrade my recovery kit. And we will be upgrading this nasty, dusty, dirty, and kinked steel line. We will be putting in a new synthetic line. But the thing is, I'm waiting for my fair lead. I actually have the line, I'm just waiting to get a, uh, a Haas fair lead because I don't really like the look of the rollers and the Haas should perform just as well with the line that I got. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about soon, probably in the next vlog if we don't have time today. But first things first, let's grab my recovery gear and let me show you guys why I'm upgrading. So what we've got here is jumper cables, gloves, Snatch block, that always comes in handy. Deering. Chain. Clinch hook. Ratchet straps. And my favorite. Mr. Toe Strap. But as you guys can see, it didn't last very long and it almost caused a lot of more damage than we were already dealing with when we had to pull the vehicle. And this was on that day that I broke my radiator. If you guys remember, back in September or late August, uh, right when we got the Jeep back from fixing the drive shaft and the U joints and the control arms, I busted my radiator about 20 minutes into the trail and yeah it wasn't fun but it happened and we had to deal with it but the good thing was we had a toe strap or so I thought <laughs> so if you guys jump back and see that video my buddy attached this toe strap to his f-150 and we wrapped it around the trailer hitch and I guess the trailer hitch was pretty jagged because we didn't get very far before this happened and the good thing is that this was attached directly to the trailer hitch. There was no kind of hardware, and by hardware I mean there wasn't a large D-ring or a heavy D-ring. There wasn't a clinch hook. There was no chain, nothing like that. Nothing that would actually cause an issue when snapping. Because as you guys know, when these are under tension or anything is under tension, especially one of these, they have the tendency to snap back with all the energy that's in the rope or in the line. And if there's anything on the end of it that's nice and heavy, then that's gonna come flying with it. So that's my number one point on why you guys wanna get yourself some soft shackles. If you guys have these on the end and something happens, say that line breaks and this is connected to your winch line, this isn't going to come flying at your car or at you or at anybody that's standing around. It's not going to cause any damage. One of these, like if this comes at you, you're okay. It's nice and soft. You can see like you can bend it. But this, it's a little less forgiving. Even this, this doesn't weigh very much, less than a pound. But coming flying at you at speed no you do not want to experience that trust me so this is going to get replaced with a few of these items and we're also going to add a couple other things so let me get the new things that i added let me show you guys exactly what we're going to throw into my recovery kit and then i'll tell you guys the other four reasons why you need to upgrade to these shackles now before we continue I do want to mention that I am not sponsored by this company or any of the gear that I bought. I bought everything out of my pocket with my own money. This was not given to me. This was 
purely stuff that I chose for myself for my my own personal rig but definitely this is stuff that I will recommend to you guys because I know people that have used it and yeah it's just people in my group of people that I off-road with have used all this stuff and I know that it's actually proven itself and I haven't had any issues and they haven't had any issues so let's get down to it the first thing that I'm going to show you guys that I added to my kit is a tree saver and this one is 3 inch by 8 inch and it is a 35,000 pound braking load limit. Now the nice thing about this one is it comes with a carrying bag but it also has these nice double lined straps on the end or hooks or whatever you want to call them, eyelets. These things do not chafe, they do not uh, burn through, they do not uh, just, they're, they're really abrasion resistant and you won't have any issues especially when you're using soft shackles with them but even when you're using a d-ring you shouldn't have any issues these things i've seen them put through hell and honestly they always last and the other good thing about the tree saver is it has this nice padded section here so that when it actually does wrap around the tree it's not just this strap so you do have an actual abrasion guard here and it helps a lot because you know tree trunks can be very jagged and all kinds of junk can be sticking out or whatever and this will help you save your strap and it will just give you a little bit more life to your strap before you have to replace it the next thing that i got also from gear america is a three inch by 20 foot 35,000 pound braking limit toe strap same type of deal it has that abrasion guard here just in case there's a rock or something or whatever whenever you're pulling there's all kinds of different obstacles in the way sometimes so you've got that abrasion guard on the middle section here but you can also slide it around wherever you need it to go you have your second abrasion guard right here this one is smaller it is meant to stay closer to the eyelet that is usually if you have something like a bumper or anything you don't want this strap rubbing up on and you just want it to stay nice and pristine you don't want to rub it on any kind of painted surface or anything like that same thing super heavy duty double lined eyelets and you don't have to worry about these coming off or breaking like this <laughs> and that's another thing even these they have like one lining of just some crappy sleeve or something you can tell these are built to a higher standard they're sewn in there they don't come off they don't move they don't actually slide around they're there to do their job and trust me they do it well and the last thing that i added is these these also have a 35,000 pound braking limit these are a half inch by i believe they are a seven inch eyelet once they are open so seven inches on this uh measurement here the actual total length i don't know i don't have my tape measure with me but everything that i just bought here i'm gonna put a link to down below uh, uh, below my video so if anybody wants to check it out there will be an amazon link so you guys can go and see whatever i just bought and get whatever you need for yourselves i think i will be not needing these or this anymore so i'm not sure if i'll be putting that back in my kit right now because these are the main thing that's going to cause damage when you're having someone pull you out or you're pulling somebody out if something slips or gives way and you have a chain or a d-ring flying at you you're not going to have a good time that's going to cause a lot of damage to either people or vehicles and you just don't want to deal with that so that's why i recommend these and that is my first point is safety these are a lot safer when pulling because they don't have that inertia they don't have that mass they're not going to come flying at you they're not going to tear things up if they do break they are basically going to just snap back and they do fly a little bit anything that has tension in it is going to fly but it's not going to hurt anybody as you can see it's like it's like a soft piece of rope because it is and there you have it this is my entire recovery kit now we've got my soft shackles our tree saver strap inside here i put the d-ring and the clinch hook just in case i ever do need it which i doubt but it's good to have backups in here i have my toe strap and my snatch block 
And in my bag of fun, we've got the gloves, jumper cables, cup two of the ratchet straps, and just in case, I've got my chain with the hooks on the end. Don't ever see myself using that once again, but like I said, it's good to be prepared and have a backup. So all of that will hopefully get us out of trouble. But there's one more thing that I have in my kit that I didn't show you guys. And that is these. And no, these are not Max Tracks. I wish they were. They are some other brand. Uh, this was something I picked up after my first off-roading trip. If you guys remember, I had to leave the Jeep overnight. <laughs> and if that doesn't ring any bells, go back and check that video out. Because that was literally the first time I took this thing off-roading. And I learned a lot. <laughs> but these are a nice last resort. We did end up using them once or twice. I uh, can't say successfully, but they they are there just in case. I think they work better in snow than they do in mud. But either way, uh, I'll throw a link to these down below as well. If somebody wants to pick these up, they do work pretty well. And they fit in the back of the TJ Nice. You can close the glass and... And that is my recovery kit. So now, let me tell you guys the other four reasons to why you need to pick up these soft shackles behind me. So before we actually get into the five points, let me quickly show you guys what these are and how they work. So basically, it is a piece of synthetic line. This is just a simple woven sleeve that they add on as an extra, which most people actually don't put on these when you, when you buy them, but this company includes them. But it is just for abrasion resistance and to help keep the life of the line. Now, basically what you have here is a knotted end and a split end. The split end goes through and once you tighten it down, this little collar here tightens down and the more you pull on it, the more it tightens itself. And that kind of gives you that safety of it not coming off. Now, some people on the cheaper ones, you'll see the end of the line here, and this knot will want to undo itself. This line doesn't have an end, as you can see. It's a high quality one, and that's why I recommend these ones, but you guys can make your own choice. But these are very strong, and it is a lot larger than a D-ring. It gives you a lot more room to play with, and a lot more things that you can actually use it for which takes me to my five points. Now these, like I said, reason number one is safety. Reason number two is versatility. Like looking at the front of the Jeep here, yeah, we've got a hook here. We've got a hook here. It's a little hard to see there. We've got a hook there. And we've obviously got our winch. So you can actually eliminate this ring, or this clinch hook I should say, with this, by attaching it in there. And this will let you attach to whatever you want the same way as that, a lot safer. And especially once I upgrade to a synthetic line, this will be a lot safer to use than anything else because you're not gonna have that added uh, weight or inertia coming at you once something snaps. So let me quickly show you guys what I'm talking about and let me just throw it on there really quick and show you guys what I mean. Now I didn't put the abrasion sleeve back on just so you can see a little bit easier what's going on. But basically you just loop it through and now you have yourself your new hook or shackle. And this thing is tough. You can pull whatever you want with your winch. You can pull yourself out, you can flip yourself back over and this thing is gonna stand up to the job. And if you want to undo it, you don't have to worry about any kind of uh, unscrewing or undoing of pins. All you have to do is loosen the lasso. As you can see, I'm doing it with one hand here in real time and just squeeze it through. And there you have it. And you can attach whatever you want, throw it on there, and you're good to go and say you don't have any hooks or you don't have a winch and somebody needs to pull you out, well, you can throw it right onto your frame. 
Watch this. Yeah, I know. It wasn't the best. <laughs> but now you guys can see it's right here and it is strapped on. You can yank on it, pull on it, tow yourself from whatever you need. And I did put the abrasion guard back on because it is in a bad place where it's up against a few different metal edges. But not to worry because you have that abrasion guard and now you can pull yourself out safely right by your frame. Look at all that room. I can still almost get my entire hand through. So you can add whatever you want, a toe strap, a hook or whatever you need from here and pull yourself out or get someone to pull you out. Or my personal favorite and the reason I bought these, I don't have any toe hooks or anything in the back that I can use to get pulled out by. So what do you do? Well, soft shackle right around the frame. So as you can see there, we're hooked right into the frame. We don't have to worry about anything that's gonna bend or twist and we can get pulled right out. Nice and sturdy. You can add a strap or a winch line or whatever you need from here and pull yourself out. So that is just how versatile they are. And worst comes to worst, say you need to pull yourself or flip yourself, you can attach this to the middle of your frame. You can attach it literally anywhere that you can loop it around. So it gives you that versatility and you don't need to worry about actually getting a whole strap around it. Because trust me, I've tried, getting a strap in here is a lot harder than it looks. What's the next reason that you should get one of these over one of these? Safety, versatility, third is ease of use. This, if you guys have ever used one in your experience, if you don't crack it a quarter turn before you start pulling or put any weight on this or any kind of tension, sometimes you're not getting this off. <laughs> so it's going to be very, very tough. And even if this is put on properly, the quarter turn back and you leave it on your Jeep and it's just hanging there on your bumper, hanging out, having a good time. When you do come to use it, sometimes they get rusted, corroded or frozen because we live up in Canada here and it gets nice and cold, sometimes you're not getting these off. So the beauty of that is this, it's not going to bind up. It's not going to lock up on you. You're always going to be able to get it off. All you got to do is loosen it. So as long as there's no tension on it, you can loosen it. If there's tension, it's going to choke around that knot and it's not going to come off. But as soon as you loosen the tension, all you do is just slip it through and that's it i didn't mean to make that rhyme it just kind of came out like that but basically that's how simple it is it literally just comes right off you don't have to worry about it binding you don't have to worry about it locking uh if you do use it in a cold environment they will freeze a little bit but of course it's going to be a lot easier to work with a frozen rope than a frozen shackle and number four is these things float Yes, that's right. The beauty of these is they float just like a synthetic winch line for your winch. If this drops in the water, you're not going to have to worry about finding it in the mud or in the slush or just in dirty water. It'll float to the top and you'll be able to easily grab it and keep on going with your recovery job. And number five, these are a lot easier to store. Something like this, you can just go bunch it up throw this in your glove box, throw it in your, in your hiking bag, throw it in your center console, throw it on the back seat, under the seat, anywhere you want. And actually, I'll give you a bonus point. Number six, you can use these as grab handles. Yes, that's right. You can just put them inside your Jeep, loop them around your roll bar and use it as a makeshift grab handle until the time comes that you need to pull yourself or somebody else out. And it's a pretty nice grab handle, especially these ones with the actual sleeve. They're nice to the touch. They're not rough. They're not hard. They're actually really solid. And they come in a lot of different colors depending on the size you get. But this blue kind of goes all right with the yellow of the Jeep. I don't mind it, but they didn't have yellow. So <laughs> I got the blue for now. And they didn't have green. I would have got the green, but it is what it is. You're not really gonna see it because of the sleeve. For the most part, they're gonna do their job when you need them. and they give you that extra benefit of removable grab handles. So let me go show you that right now. I'm not gonna lie guys, they came out a lot better than I thought as grab handles. 
Uh, I think I'm gonna have to get two more for the back just because they work so good, but check it out. And the beauty of these is like you can get, I'm putting most of my weight on it right now and that knot keeps it in place. So you can see it doesn't really want to move. It kind of just stays where you put it. Oh, my entire sleeve here has moved. But yeah, see, now it doesn't really go anywhere. Oh, really trying to pull on it there. But you get the point. If you're using them as a regular grab handle, you don't have to worry about the sleeves on your roll bars moving because you're just pulling down. And if you're driving around, the beauty of it is you can put it where you need it. You want to grab a handle here or here or here, you got it. And they are tough. I doubt you're going to use 35,000 pounds of strength on there, <laughs> so you should be good. But definitely, I am going to grab another set for the back just because of how cool they are and how versatile they are. And it's always good to have an extra set of straps or an extra set of shackles, I should say, just in case you get into a predicament where you need to get pulled out. And we all know that's going to happen a lot sooner than later in my TJ. <laughs> We're going to be hitting the trails soon. And if you've been following the build, then we have been making some good progress, but there is a few more things to come and the best mods are still coming. Lift kit, wheels and tires, and a few other goodies that I don't want to give away just yet. But trust me guys, we are going to be taking this thing out on the trails and putting her to the test soon. So these grab handles hopefully will do the job. But I recommend them. If you guys want them, like I said, the link is down in the description. And I think I'm going to be ordering myself two more for the back seats. And an update on my leaky window. I think I have completely fixed the issue. If you guys see here. See how it's got that little bit of a bounce to it now? That's because it actually sits on the rubber which it didn't before. So it was leaking all through here. The water would roll down off the roof in behind the glass and it would either roll down the glass or just sit along the edge of the roof and come down the sides. So now what we did, like I showed you guys before, is we pulled this all the way off and then we just seated it so the window would touch it until basically it seated itself to the right distance in because as you can see it can go in a lot further it can go all the way up to here but it's seated there and how i got it to stay is i used my weather stripping glue the weather stripping adhesive same stuff that we were using last time over here and you can see it dries into like a rubber like, I don't know how to explain it, but it actually kind of cures into like a solid rubber. Like this isn't coming off anywhere. So now what I did was I took this all the way off. I laid a bead all the way around. It was a little tricky getting behind here because I didn't feel like taking it off, but I got it done. <laughs> and I, we laid a bead all the way up until here. So we laid a bead from there to there. As you can see right here where it kind of starts to come out right there so yeah we laid our bead from there right to here you can see there it starts to come out so basically now it doesn't move it doesn't come out because that liquid rubber hardened and cured and now holds our gasket in place so fingers crossed guys we should be good to take it outside and not have any kind of leaks and not have any drips and our trunk should stay dry this time and so now you can see this is our recovery kit, but we need to do something about this toolkit. And yeah, but I've got a solution. I got some tool cases, which are right there. So let me transfer all that crap into there and I'll show you guys just how nice and set up we can be because this is definitely not doing the job, this bag of fun. <laughs> So let's go and let's finish it up real quick. So we've got the bottle jack under the seat, all the recovery gear you guys just saw, all in the back here, bit of coolant and oil. We've got my recovery boards or traction mats, whatever you guys want to call them, and my toolkit. So basically what we have here is a full socket set with a half inch, three eighths quarter, 
all the bits and sockets, deep sockets, short sockets, whatever I can think of that I would need on the road. This has like 90% of it covered. Here we've got all our screwdrivers, diamond tipped with the striking caps. We've got a few gear wrenches, pliers, some vice grips, filter wrench in case we need to change the oil, plug kit with two plugs left, we need to get a couple more, and set of metric and standard wrenches. And these are combination wrenches. So between all of this, only thing I don't really have with me is a hammer. And I do have my breaker bar here in case we need to change a wheel or something. So with all of that, I should be pretty good. But there's always situations where you don't have everything. Like when you need to change a radiator on the side of the road. <laughs> so this gear should have me covered for about 90% of the things that we're going to come across out on the trail. But just in case... It's good to have buddies with you who have other things and different variety of stuff because you never know what you might need. And before I forget, there's also a folding shovel and a hacksaw inside that I bring with me because I had to cut the exhaust off one day, so you never know. <laughs> you might need it, you might not. But that pretty much sums it up. Thought I would give you guys a quick gear update as well as a recovery gear update so now we are ready to go and hit the trails the only thing we need to do is finish up the last few mods and that will include wheels and tires so rims and tires lift a uh, few other goodies that I don't want to give away <laughs> and yeah we're gonna be doing a bunch of other mods uh, don't really want to give it away but that's gonna be the main one is the lift that's what I'm really waiting for and the oil pan can't wait to get that because she is leaking but that's all right all in good time and hopefully good time means within the next week or two <laughs> but hopefully it will get done soon I just have to wait on a few more things and we will be getting this thing wrapped up but thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you guys for coming out and watching the video. Hopefully you guys are with me for the rest of the build and you guys are here to see how this thing turns out and to see me rip it up off road. So don't forget to jump down there and subscribe. If you're new around here, hit a like button. Let me know what you guys thought and drop me a comment because trust me guys, I'm always listening and I'm always down to make videos for you guys because that's the main reason I make these videos is because I enjoy working on my Jeep and I want to share it with you guys so you guys can go out and do what you want to your vehicles and make it that much better and enjoyable for yourselves. So thank you guys for watching today. Thank you guys for sticking around. And until next time, guys, ride safe out there. Peace.